The Daedalus Hammer is often the key upgrade you need to transform any Hades run. The fact that you can only get two per run and have no ability to roll your options means that your choice is going to be very important. Not to mention that there are several options that might sound better than they actually are. So today I'm going to go over which hammers are best for which situations for all of the weapons and why. Now I can't cover every single hammer in the game, but we're definitely going to cover all of the best and some of the worst that we have out there. But first, let's get some hammer basics out of the way. There is a 25% chance that you'll get a hammer in the very first chamber of a run. Otherwise, you'll most likely get one offered as a chamber reward in Tartarus along the way. Of course, it's possible to get unlucky and not even get it offered until Asphodel. If you choose another reward over a hammer, don't worry, you'll get offered it again eventually. The first chamber in Elysium is where you could start to see the second hammer get offered. And the same rules apply, and if you somehow miss it in Elysium, there is still a chance it'll be on a door in Styx. If you enter Elysium with no hammers, you could still get both of them before you meet the heroes. Also, some hammers can't be combined with others. For instance, if you take Hazard Bomb for the rail, you cannot be offered Triple Bomb, Cluster Bomb, or Rocket Bomb afterward. And some aspects will not be able to even see certain hammers, such as Aspect of Lucifer not being able to get Rocket Bomb. Now, I can't cover all of these exclusions, so I recommend checking out the Hades Wiki if you're curious about what can and cannot be comboed. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's start with the sword and work our way through each weapon. First, let's cover a couple of pieces of bait and explain why they aren't as good as they look. Hoarding Slash provides bonus attack damage depending on how many obols you have, but unless you get your obols into the thousands, you'll hardly notice a difference. You should know that the damage bonus from Hoarding Slash doesn't get multiplied by boons or anything else. It only gets added on at the end of the equation. Obviously, you can have some fun by going for this and stockpiling thousands of obols for an entire run, but it's normally never worth taking this hammer over other options, and plus, then you couldn't spend all those obols on boons or palms. The other hammer that sounds way better than it is is Cruel Thrust. Those juicy numbers that it lists only apply to the third strike in the sword combo. They do not apply to dash strikes, even though they do look like a thrust. And by the way, you can't get this hammer with Aspect of Arthur, and so it's just not good. But onto what is good, Double Edge makes your dash strikes hit twice and provide a 20% damage boost to them. This is pretty easily the best hammer of the entire weapon, I think. I mean, more than doubling your attack output is insane. If you haven't gotten into the habit of dash striking everywhere with the sword, I highly recommend it. The only other remarkable hammer is probably Shadow Slash, but only with the aspect of Arthur since it doesn't affect dash strikes, unfortunately. That juicy 200% backstab boost will do a lot of work for that chunky sword and is easily the top pick for that particular aspect. A couple of other decent hammers you could take are Breaching Slash, which gives you bonus damage to armor, and Piercing Wave, which just offers a little bit of extra damage at a range. Moving on to the spear, and we got some interesting things going on here. There's no big bait hammers besides maybe Chain Skewer or Vicious Skewer maybe, but I guess they're not the worst anyway. There are a lot of aspect exclusives with the spear, but a couple of the aspects have the option for potentially the best single hammer upgrade in the game, Flurry Jab. You can only get it on Achilles or Zag Aspect, but it is absolutely amazing. Just hold down the attack button and dash around like crazy, basically. So why is it so good? Well, the bottom line is that it just deals a ton of damage quickly, especially if you keep dashing around while attacking. You get in so many attacks that it just melts everything almost instantly. But since it only works with two aspects, we gotta cover some more ground. Charge Skewer works great with the aspect of Guan Yu since it gives you amazing range and decent damage output. Outside of Guan Yu though, it's kind of just okay. Exploding Launcher is a nice boost to special damage with some much needed AoE for both Aspect of Zag and Hades. I know y'all are probably curious what I think of the Spin Hammers, so Quick Spin is a great hammer for Aspect of Hades and Guan Yu in particular, but the other spinny hammers don't feel great if you don't have Quick Spin already. 
All right, we're on to the shield. There are definitely a lot of dud hammer options, mostly centered around the special. Dashing Flight, Empowering Flight, and Dread Flight are all just bleh. They don't really work well with any of the aspects and are just kind of wonky. You might think that Empowering Flight sounds great on Aspect of Zeus, but you will actually only get the buff after the special hits an enemy and you catch the shield. Oh, and I would stay away from Minotaur Rush. It's just not worth trying. The best hammer on the shield has to be Charge Shot, which turns your Bull Rush into a ranged attack that deals 80 base damage. You need to know that 80 is a lot for a base damage number, so suddenly that attack slot is just itching to get filled. Sudden Rush is fine for some utility, but doesn't offer any real damage boost, and Ferocious Guard is okay to follow up as well. Explosive Return is actually great with Aspect of Chaos and Zeus since the AoE is massive and the explosion's base damage is 50, so not bad. Everything else on the shield is just kinda okay or only for very particular builds. Like Pulverizing Blow is alright on Zag Aspect and Charge Flight can work on Beowulf and Zag for a long range bonk build. Now the bow is interesting since it has a ton of great hammers. Twin Shot and Triple Shot are probably the best for the Aspect of Zag, Hera, and Rama. If you pair either of those with Perfect Shot or Point Blank Shot, you'll be dealing some massive D. But then you also got Flurry Shot, which works great on Zag, Hera, and even decently well on Chiron. Even Explosive Shot isn't that bad with either Twin or Triple Shot, as long as you give up getting Power Shots and just start spamming close range attacks. However, Sniper Shot has got to be the weakest hammer on the bow by far. Trying to get that additional damage off is just ridiculously difficult with enemies that are constantly moving, Plus, it stops the game from offering you certain great hammers like Twin Shot or Point Blank Shot later on. Chiron is a bit different since it focuses on special damage, so you definitely want Concentrated Volley or Relentless Volley as the best in slots. Piercing Volley is just kinda eh, but the nice thing about Chiron is that it can still benefit from the attack hammers we already discussed in case you don't get the special oriented ones. Now we're on to the Fists. The nice thing about the Fists is that I always felt like they don't have to have a great hammer to have a decent run. Unlike some other weapons like maybe the Spear, they're kinda just fine on their own. But of course, some hammers are still gonna be better than others. The only trap hammers I feel are maybe Draining Cutter and Flying Cutter. And Draining Cutter can be okay though as a second hammer depending on which one you get first and what kind of build you got going on at that point. Oh yeah, and Heavy Knuckles sucks. It's really just a side grade since it slows your attack sequence but only slightly increases the damage. They buffed this hammer a lot right after 1.0, but it never really got to a good place. I think the best hammer options are probably Breaching Cross and Explosive Upper. Armor stripping from Breaching Cross just makes elite enemies and mini bosses so much easier to deal with, and Explosive Upper is a fun hammer, especially with Aspect of Demeter. Keep in mind that you gotta dash into using the special to get it to work though. The rest of the hammers pretty much end up in the okay range. Kinetic Launcher and Quake Cutter can be some goofy fun, but I don't know if I'd describe them as good. Alright, the last weapon, the Rail. And we got some crazy combos that are possible with this. Let's talk about Lucifer first, just because it has a lot of unique hammers that you can only get when using it. The best hammer for Lucifer has to be Triple Bomb because those special bombs actually have really high base damage, so being able to throw out three at once is a huge benefit. Flash Fire is a decent hammer after that, but stay away from Concentrated Beam because the whole damage ramping thing that Lucifer's attack does just doesn't really work and the hammer doesn't make it work, unfortunately. For the other aspects, you can never go wrong with hammers like Rocket Bomb, Cluster Bomb, Targeting System, Delta Chamber, uh, okay, there's a lot of good rail hammers. But that's nice because it means you'll almost always have a useful option offered to you. And if you don't know, getting both Rocket Bomb and Cluster Bomb in the same run equates to monster damage, so starting with either of those is ideal in case you get the God combo. Delta Chamber is a nice cozy hammer to not have to think about reloading while also giving back the iframes while dashing that the rail initially stole from us. Don't bother with hammers like Flurry Fire or Seeking Fire, they're just weak. Ricochet and Piercing Fire are really only worthwhile when using Aspect of Hestia as well. And then you got Hazard Bomb, which provides big numbers, but then again, it's Hazard Bomb. Oh, and lastly, Spread Fire is kind of great, but probably only worth when using Zag Rail and some kind of percentage-based attack like Aphrodite or Artemis, so it's kind of just particular. 
right, that was pretty fast. Do you feel like I missed anything? Did I gloss over your favorite hammer? Let me know in the comments. Also, feel free to ask questions or tell me what else you'd like to learn about Hades. And of course, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to get more content around Hades and other roguelike games. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.